Hi theory students, welcome to an, the second video on harmonic sequences. We're going to write some now. So here are some step-by-step -step directions on how to go about doing this so it doesn't take very long. It's basically knowing how to write two chords and then just building the rest of it from that. So first you're going to write, you're going to, you're given a sequence. So you're going to know what that sequence is and write down all the Roman numerals. And then from there, you'll write down what the correct bass part is for all those chords. And then you're going to write out the first two chords following whatever pattern needs to be created. So you're doing the correct part writing for those first two chords. And you're going to double check that you've done everything right before you move on. And then from there, you're just going to copy, it's like copy-paste, you're going to copy those two first two chords as chords two and three and move them up or down however much they need to be moved so that you're do making sure you have the sequence and the pattern. So you're making a pattern and following it, as I said. So, and from there you just keep on doing that until you've gotten all the way through the sequence. It's not very complicated, you just have to know what you're doing from the beginning. So let's go to the notation software. Here we go, so I'm going to do three examples for you. The first one is going to be a descending circle of fifths sequence in triads all in root position following a 10-8 linear intervallic pattern. So um, I'm in C minor, so I know my, so I need to put in my Roman numerals first for just that. So I have minor one, the second chord is down a fifth from that minor four, down a fifth from that is subtonic seven, then major three, major six, then two diminished, major five, gonna need an accidental for that one, and minor one. So let me put in my bass. So in C minor, one is C. I'm gonna put it up an octave. Then I'm gonna go down a fifth for, four, for F, up a fourth for B flat, down a fifth for E flat, up a fourth for A flat, down a fifth for D, up a fifth for G, and down a fifth for C. Then, now the next part is to write out the first two chords. So I need a 10-8 intervallic pattern, so that's going to be 10-8, 10-8, 10-8, 10-8. 10, so a tenth above C is E flat, I'll put that in the soprano. And then an octave above F is, of course, F. So notice I have an ascending stepwise pattern, ascending step going on in the soprano against the, the the leap in the bass. So now I just fill in the rest of the chords. So I have a C and an E flat. I need another C and a G. So I'm going to put the G in the alto and I'm going to put the C in the tenor. So there we go. That's a perfectly good first chord. And now I just do a good part writing going into the next chord, which means common tone C in the tenor and A flat. So notice for my descending circle of fifths here with reposition triads, I'm basically leap down by fifth, common tone, and two steps up. So now I'm going to double check that I did that right. Two Cs, an E flat, and a G, an F, an F, an A flat, and a C. So that's good. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to copy it over to the next part. So notice that. Um, we have a C here, and then this chord here is a B flat. So everything is going to be a whole step. is going to, It's going to be a step diatonically lower than the first chord. So that means my tenor should also be B flat, which then should go to another B flat, the next chord. Then my G here should be an F, which then ascends to a G, and my soprano should be a D going to E flat. Now let's double check that that's correct. Do I have a B flat major triad with two B flats, a D, and an F? I do. Do I have an E flat major triad with two E flats, a G, and a B flat? I have that as well. So, and we have a common tone and two steps up with our leap down by fifth. So that's all working well, so I could just keep going and do this two more times and I'll have everything. So notice our pattern. Uh, we have a step up, down a third, step up, so I'm going to go down a third from this chord, so it would be a C, which goes up to D, and then I should have B flat, 
up to C. Then I'll do the alto. The alto does basically the same thing with different pitches. So G A flat, F G, E flat, F, D, E flat. And then the tenor going C, C, B flat, B flat makes sense to go A flat, A flat, G, G. So let me check all those chords are correct. I need an A flat major triad to A flat, C, and E flat. I do. I need a D diminished triad, D, F, A flat. I do have D, F, A flat, and another D. And then for my five chord, I need G, B, D, and I have G, B flat, D. And remember I said before, we're going to need an accidental here. There it is, B natural for T. And then two Cs, an E flat, and a G. Pretty easy, right? I did the first two chords, and then I just copy everything over, moving down by step for a circle of fifths. All right, now moving on to the second one. So I'm in G major, I need another descending circle of fifths sequence, this time seventh chords, and I'm going to alternate root position with second inversion triads. Now if you follow the examples in the book, you'll note that the first chords in these examples are always triads, and the last ones are triads as well. Both one chords are triads, so I'm going to write major one as a triad. So then I'll do a root position, 7th chord, 4. And then I want a 7 diminished in 2nd inversion, which would be 4, 3. Let me do it this way. And then 4, 3. No, that's not the way I wanted to do that. I'm sorry. Oops. 4, 3. There it is. Then I want a three chord in minor, that's the seventh chord, so three, seven. Then I want a six, four, three. And then I want a two, seven. Then I want a five, four, three. And then I want major one. So there we go. One, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. It's uh, it's not necessarily lined the way I want it. It'll line up better when I add all my beats in. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to put in my bass line. So I need G. And then, so a 4 7 chord in the bass is a D. And then a four, 7 4 3 chord. So 7 is an F sharp chord with. C in the bass. And then I need a three chord, which is a B in the bass. I'm sorry, with a, yeah, B in the bass. And then I need a six, four, three chord. So six is E. And a four, three from E is B. I'm sorry. Going backwards. There we go. So it's supposed to be four is a C chord, excuse me. I bet you knew that all the way from the beginning. So four. And then so two should be an A, and the fifth of a five seven chord is also A going to G. So notice the stepwise bass pattern there. And let me put that all in voice two. Click, and then from here. So um, I don't have an intervallic pattern to build off of here, so I'm just gonna fill out a nice chord. So double the G. Put the B here, and I'll put my D there for my G chord. All right, so now the seventh of my 4 7 chord is the B, so I'm going to keep the B there, and then should move down to A in the next chord. So then I'll finish my chord here, go to E, and I need a G. So there we go, E and G. So now from here, so 7, 4, 3 is a, a F sharp A, C, E chord. I'm sorry, it should be half diminished. That's fun. Okay. 7 is half diminished in major. Does it even give me the option? There it is. Okay. La la la. Making corrections. All right, so F sharp, A, C, and E. So I'm going to keep my E, which is the seventh of the chord, and move my soprano down to F sharp. All right, so now and then I can use these two chords here as my pattern that I'll base everything off of. So notice we'll have two common, so two common tones, common tone, common tone, common tone. 
So then I'll have this voice is going to step down from, uh, so it'll go down from A down to G, and that'll go from G down to F sharp, and back up to G to do one. Then here, so we got two common tones again, so this should go down to D, right, res resolve the seventh, go D, D, and then we should have C, C, and uh, that C should go down to B to resolve the seventh. And then so our B, D, we need another F sharp, which should then step down to E, which should then stay E, go down to D, and then stay on D for our five chord. So let's see if that sounds like. Ah, sounds lovely. Here, I never played the first one, so. Lovely. Oh, sorry. Going on. And here we go for the last one. So descending thirds and interplating basically means sticking a chord in between our descending thirds and first inversion. So this will be the one, five, six, six, and so on. So let's put that in. So I need one, and then five, six, and then six, and then three, six, and then four, and then one, six, and that's where I'm going to stop. I'm only going to write six chords for this one. So here we go. So I need, so my bass line is going to be D, and then an A chord with the third in the bass, C sharp. Six is a B chord. The three chord is F sharp, A, C sharp. We want the A for the third in the bass. Then we have G and then F sharp in the bass for the last one for a one six chord. Then let me finish my D chord here. So I want a D somewhere. I'll put it there this time. Put an F sharp in the alto and put an A in the tenor. So if you stop and turn to page 387 in your book, you'll see the example we're going to want to follow is at the top of the page, example 16.2, letter B. So we do have our descending bass pattern, this time in A major. And notice we have two voices, a voice that move, another voice that moves down by step, which is starts with the third of the chord and moves down. We have another voice that sings common tones and then leaps by third and the other voice does a descending fourth and it's stepping back up so so the third of this chord is the f sharp so that should go to my e here then i want my the uh, the thing doubling the root to descend by fourth to a and we're going to have the other voice keep a so this is the pattern notice it's got this fourth leap in there that's the one we want to keep so that might not make sense necessarily well what we've done but if you did the root position version this would be the base so it's we're just shuffling the voices around so this two chord pattern is what we're going to use to move forward so notice we're doubling the root in the five six chord so i'm going to take this chord and write it down a third because the sixth is a third below that so my d in the soprano is going to become a b and my A here is going to become F sharp, and my E here, I'm sorry, the F sharp here is going to become a D. And we have two Bs, a D and an F sharp. And so I'll just follow this pattern through to the end. So this one should sing A, I'm sorry, F sharp, and then we have D, D, descending thirds, common tone. And then we're going to just keep going down by step here, so C sharp, B, A, and then here we go down a fourth, up a second, so down a fourth from B here is F sharp, and a third below B is G, and then down a fourth from that is D. And that follows our descending third sequence pattern with first inversion triads in between. Great, and that's all I need you to be able to do for that. So practice doing these and other versions of each of these so that you're prepared for class on Tuesday. Have a good day.